Take it on. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Uncommon Man Podcast. I'm your host, David, and this is the, the other half of the Uncommon Man Podcast. It's Mike. Mike, say what's Hi. up. <laughs> hey, man, we're happy to be on again for another episode. Uh, just real quick, uh, we want to uh, invite everybody to our Twitter account so you can uh, like and share. You know, we want to see your comments. And uh, so... On this podcast, we're going to kind of go through our, our conference draft classes. And, and the reason why we're going to do that is just kind of see, did everybody else around us get any better? And just from a fan's perspective, we're going to just talk through uh, the AFC West draft class and see if, you know, if it strikes fear in our heart or is it, uh, I mean, business as usual. So first, we're going to start with the Los Angeles Chargers. Yes, we are, my friends. So we'll uh, go ahead. We've got it pulled up. We've got a pretty good game plan going here for how we're going to address this. Uh, so what we will do when my computer stops freaking out is we will... Just bear I with us. you, sir... By the looks of us, we're not really uh, tech nerds, so we just trying to do the best we can. We have a good game plan going. It's just not a great one. Oh, what the French toast. I have been drinking for everybody that's questioning that at this point. No, nah, don't say what the French toast. Not, say how you really feel. <laughs> All right, buddy. You can see the whole thing, right? Okay, so we're going to start with the Las Vegas Raiders because that's the screen that he's on. There, hey, that was easier. Yes, sir. All right, Mike. So you want to run us through their their draft picks, and after that, we'll just we'll talk about it briefly. All right. Well, I know it's hacky at this point, but we already know who I was in originally on board for it, and I like I said, I I kind of like verbally waterboarded you into the point of where you just got on board for it, but they took our number one pick at number twelve. Mm -hmm. um, they they scooped in and they swiped them. And I, I, I can't disagree with this pick at all. Like, um, I, I, we kind of addressed it uh, while we were off camera at a certain point in time with Ruggs. There is nobody on the roster who's going to be able to really open that guy up for that offense. Right. Like, I'm, I'm just not concerned. I mean, yeah, he'll take the top off the of defense, but it, – they don't have anybody with the arm strength to really utilize his talents, man. I mean, he brings a different dynamic to an offense with a quarterback who can throw 65, 70 yards. And, I mean, I love Marcus Mariota just being kind of like a, a hacky Oregon fan um, it, just because they're, you know, not outside of our – or, you know, they're not in our conference. Uh, yeah, I, I, I just – don't really see that. I saw that more as like a, a desperation move just to try and keep speed. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, so let's go through the rest of these and uh, break them down as we get done. So uh, their next first round pick is Damon Arnett. Uh, third round <laughs> pick, Lynn Bowden Jr., uh, the next third round pick is uh, Brian Edwards. The third third round pick, Tana Muse. Uh, their fourth round pick is John Simpson, and their in their last fourth round pick is uh, Amik Robinson, cornerback out of La Tech. Okay, so my gave his kind of an initial reaction to Henry Ruggs, and my initial reaction to them taking Henry Ruggs is they're strictly trying to mimic the Kansas City Chiefs. This whole draft process. Henry Ruggs III has been compared to who? Tyreek Hill. So what do the Raiders do? They go to they go get somebody that can basically pretty much mimic Tyreek Hill because Tyreek Hill has been lighting the NFL on fire for years now. And so everybody wants their kind of piece of Tyreek Hill. That's all that screams to me. Uh, Damon Arnett. I mean, let's be honest. They took him way too early. Damon Arnett is nowhere near a first round cornerback. Not even close. Not even close. This is that's, just that's ridiculous. Shit. But here's the deal about it, dude. Personality wise, he's exactly what the Raiders want. 
Because well, he's exactly what the old writers are. He, I mean, if a, it, he's just going to be a headache every step of the way, and it's nothing against the guy. I mean, he was insanely impressive. But you think about it, like he should have been, uh, he should have been thrown out for that targeting in the fucking championship game, or uh, I'm sorry, the um, the playoff game. Like he absolutely should have been fucking thrown out for targeting. And he was mm-hmm. pissed off. I mean, don't get me wrong. He brought the intensity you like. When he got on, you know, when he got on the sidelines, he was sitting there high fiving people and stuff. But yeah, no, I mean, that he he literally had Raiders just plastered across his forehead. He might as well got it tattooed across his back. Oh, you know, right across the old fucking vertebrae there, saying, "Yeah, go ahead and come pick me And whatever spot. It don't matter. I'll be here in the first fucking round one or round three. You guys will overpick me." <laughs> <laughs> and so the third round pick, uh, Lynn Bowden Jr. I mean, I liked um, Lynn Bowden Jr. Uh, yes. going into the draft just just by you know him being just an all around athlete. I mean, any any put any position on the offensive side of the ball, you want that dude to do. I mean, he's one of those. Hey, put me in coach and let me work. I mean, he can play he can play wide receiver, running back, quarterback. But let's face it, in the NFL, he's only going to play one position. And that's going to be wide receiver. And he needs a lot of polishing to play NFL style wide receiver. So I, right now I at this point, I feel that I feel that he's there at Danny Amendola. Like I out of all these mm-hmm. picks that they had wide receiver wise, I, I think he's the one that's gonna actually like really shine for them because mm-hmm. he doesn't have Henry Ruggs speed, but he also he was such a utility weapon at Kentucky because they had no fucking offense whatsoever. I mean, they, their offensive line stunk. The rest of it, go ahead and name the quarterback from Kentucky. I can't. Just as a fair it's, it's him. He's the quarterback. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, they, he, he, but he was their wide receiver his senior year. So, uh-huh. like, yeah, they, dude, they, uh, like I said, I think he's going to be their Danny, and, Danny Amendola. I think he's their breakout star this season. He's the one that we need to put somebody on because if people are going to underestimate him but he brings a fuckload to the table. That was the one that you and I were sitting there going, yeah, you know what? I think in the sixth round, that would have been a fucking fantastic pick for the Broncos. Absolutely. Him him in later rounds, yes, you can justify taking him there and, and work with him on route running. But here, it, it, it's your first third round pick. Uh, it's a little early for him. Uh, so now we're going to go into Brian Edwards. Um, he's he's a bigger uh, wide receiver out of South Carolina. Um, a lot of people kind of kind of hyped him up really before the draft, and I can see why. I mean, so I think that's good value them getting him in the third round. Out of the three receivers, I feel like him and Henry Ruggs are potentially going to be the biggest uh, targets or the biggest headaches uh, just starting out. In and. And Hunter Renfro. You heard it here first. I think so. I mean, I mean, it's, it's just my point. So I'll take um, one if you got Edwards. Then. Okay. Okay. That's fair. And Everybody what do you? And we say right now. Yeah, I'm not doing well statistically. He's doing fantastic. So. <laughs> and um, and what do you know? The, the Raiders do what they always do. They go and they try to raid Clemson's <laughs> locker room. And, I mean, don't, don't get me wrong. When you have a championship caliber team like that, yeah, you want to get some of their people. But, golly, I mean, you got to have a kind of – you got to have a different draft model than I'm just going to raid Clemson's locker room every single year for four or five players. I mean, you got to ha- have a better draft model than that. I love it, dude. What you – so you... – <laughs> So I was out literally, I was replacing taillights, well, pretty much all the lights, actually all the lights on my boat while he's messaging me and I had the TV up in the background watching the draft and he he calls me and said, was it a call or text? It, uh, I think it was a text. Was it te- he texted me and said, so they took a meet Robertson right after Kansas City took another took the safety from Louisiana Tech, which we'll bring him up here in a few. He's he's gonna be down the road. Uh-huh. Um, but I, <laughs> I immediately, even though I knew where Meek Robertson was from, I texted him and I said, "So uh, they so Kansas City took someone from Clemson too, huh?" <laughs> I, I to dude, <laughs> without knowing their two previous picks had been from uh-huh. Clemson. 
without fucking knowing, dude. That was off the cuff. Had no idea. But it's even better just sitting here looking at it, going, "Holy shit, that's pathetic." Like I think any, um, I think any draft expert or draft analyst, I think every for, for, for every year, if, if if you're mocking the Raiders draft, you should put just all Clemson players. Yeah, dude. It, it's <laughs> no one pick Clemson. No one two dude, pick it's Clemson. It's like being a meteorologist in Seattle. All you have to do is say like ninety five percent of the time it's gonna rain. <laughs> right. <laughs> 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 Yo, man, <laughs> the Raiders are so worthless. Like, if you're a Broncos fan, then you just <laughs> you just have no fucking hope for them. Yeah, but I mean, honestly, like looking at this, l- l- looking at the draft class, I mean, outside of one or two people, I mean, it, it doesn't strike fear in my heart uh, because, for one, who's going to be the quarterback for for the Raiders? I mean, is 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 either is either Derek Carr or uh, Marcus Mariota? Uh, we, we've been playing against Derek Carr for how long now? And we all know what, like, what Derek Carr likes to do. He likes to get the ball out of his hands quick. Okay. John Gruden wants to go deep. So if John Gruden has it his way, uh, these speed receivers are going to be running downfield and he has to hold the ball just a little bit longer. And what's going to happen when Derek Carr holds that ball a few seconds longer? He's going to get smacked in the mouth by Bradley Chubb or Von Miller or one of our new D linemen. So uh, yeah. honestly, I, I I don't see them being um that big of a threat this you, year. Sorry. You know what wrecked Derek Carr, dude, was that broken leg. Like, and I I completely understand this, man. Like, mm-hmm. I I'm not I'm not shitting on him. He was a really like you thought he was an up and coming quarterback for a while until that just gruesome leg snap, and then mm-hmm. uh, all of a sudden, man, he was just he's been afraid to take a hit ever since, and it's completely reflect like. He's playing to try and have longevity to his career rather uh-huh. than trying to make it in the NFL. So, yeah, it, I can see that. And I mean, if, if that's his end game, I get it. But it, unfortunately for him, like, I think that he has he has a better head on his shoulders and a, a better quality team. Like, uh, as much as I don't like the Raiders, I think he has a better quality team than what was around his brother at Houston at the time. Mm-hmm. And he. He's just not pushing it to where it needs to be, and he, he can't. In Mariota, he's not going to be any different, man. Marcus Mariota, he's he's one of those guys, if he can't roll out and make a play for about 35, 40 yards, I mean, that's that's all he's got. So, I mean, so pretty much the way they drafted, if, if you would not let Henry Ruggs or Lynn Bowden Jr. take the top off of the defense, then why would you draft them? Right. I mean, what's 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 the point? If do if they, if literally, like, what, what you gonna have them do? Do uh dink and dunk plays and just let them run in space? Which that seems why, really kind of productive. Why would you not draft Jerry Judy? Like I, that that mm-hmm. is his specialty is within five yards getting separation. Like exactly, and, exactly. And I'm no professional fucking sports analyst. Don't get, obviously both of us are bums, but we're athletic and we've at least played the sport and we've taken our knocks. So why, why, why would you not take, you know, the two best route runners and or the best catch ability possible with C.D. Lamb or Jerry Judy? It, it was like a fear tactic, and I think you nailed it. They were just they, – they're trying to reenact what the Chiefs did, and they're, they're, you can't do that without the quarterback to apply the skills needed to hit these guys. Nicely said. Nicely said. Me, me, me and Mike, we definitely feel the same way on this. Um, so on that note, we're going to keep moving along. Uh, go to the, um, the the Los Angeles Chargers here. On to the Chargers. Did this not work? What happened? Uh, it, it, it worked on my end. No, you can see it, but it's not showing the draft picks, right? Oh, shit. No, Bowie. Draft tracker. What happened? All right. I must have clicked something. Are you on the other side? Okay, there we go. There we go. Back in the New York group. Okay. So let's go. Okay, so we're going to go down and list them off. So Justin Herbert. Uh, we got Kenneth Murray. Scroll down, sir. We got Joshua Kelly, running back UCLA. We got, was it Joe Reed? 
Virginia. And, and Gilman from Virginia and KJ Hill, Ohio State. And that about rounds out their draft. I cannot believe he dropped to where he did, dude. Yeah. Okay, so let's go back up to oh Justin Herbert. Okay, so Justin Herbert and just watching him for the past two years, because remember Broncos country, there was a lot of talk of John Elway potentially taking Justin Herbert, and a lot of people had him mocked to us if he would have came out last year. And then if Drew Locke didn't pan out the way he did, again, a lot of people still was floating the ideal of Justin Herbert coming to Denver. But thank God that didn't happen. Uh, he's a very toolsy quarterback. He's tall. He's athletic. He's mobile. He has a rocket arm. But listening to this guy talk and listening to interviews of this dude, he's a fucking sweetheart. Almost too sweet for to, to be the franchise quarterback. I mean, he gives me a little bit too much P- PTSD of Paxton Lynch. I mean, this guy is, I mean, I've heard him say it. I've heard him say it so many times. Hey, you know what, man? I'm just happy to be here. Uh, that's it? I mean, you're just, you're just happy to be here? I mean, you should be confident enough that your ability brought you here. And not that I'm just happy to be here. No, that's kind of a no-go for me. I mean, this guy, he's, I don't know, he's just very, a very nice guy. I mean, I don't know. I kind of want, I kind of want a little bit of cockiness to, to my quarterback. I agreed. Um, the one thing that I'll give Herbert, because you, you brought up, obviously, a really sore spot for every Broncos fan possible. Mm-hmm. That's just a the Lynch pick because they're almost identical in theory, is – Herbert played on a big name team, and right, right. He, he stayed a big name the entire time. Like, mm-hmm. if you watch the tape on Herbert, when they actually really let the kid play, he he stepped up and he showed out. Uh, I mean, it, did he have his quirks? Yeah, absolutely. Um, there, there was its rough patches. Uh, last year, I feel like he kind. Of, I mean, I feel like he fell flat on his face last year. They, like it, it's a good thing he didn't go into the draft because the way he ended out his season, no, um, he would have never been a top top ten pick last year. But with him finishing out this year, winning in the Pac-12 championship, and then also going on and winning their bowl game, like that, that just skyrocketed his stock because it showed that. He at least has he has the charisma and and the passion and the flair to come through and at least like win games when need be as long as they kind of let him like start extending plays. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I feel I feel like he was being curbed a little bit while he was there at Oregon, uh, but yeah, I there's no possible way that the Chargers was a good fit for him, dude. It was a horrible fit for him. So let me ask you this. Do you think he starts from day one or do you think they do that whole open quarterback competition bullshit during training camp and it, it, the game three, he starts over Tyrod Taylor? So I don't think there's any way that he starts over Tyrod Taylor. It's, it, no. Um, they're they're going to let – they're probably going to end up doing the whole botched Baker Mayfield process, the exact same thing again, which stinks because uh, – what's his name? Lynn uh, – Oh shit! I always forget his name. But he he used to be one of our linebackers. So and he was also a coach on the Broncos as well. So you, I mean, mm-hmm. you want to see him do well, but like, you know, I think with the Chargers, like they they took Herbert at, at the number six pick. I think this is one of the better picks. I like. I think Herbert was better than Love, um, but not because I think that they're better quarterbacks. That 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 is to be seen. I, I think I think Herbert is proven in a conference and a division where it's still top tier. Like you get top five draft picks, you know. It, like mm-hmm. you, you think about the the number one high school recruit is at Oregon. The the number one tackle coming up in next year's draft is at Oregon. Mm-hmm. So you, you know Sewell's coming up next year. He's gonna be a top five pick. It, whereas Jordan Love, like. Jordan Love was at Utah State, and I i mean, we, we can all make the argument. I i have nothing to do with the Packers. We have nothing to do with the Packers, so we're not going to go into that here. But, like, 
it, it was just a terrible pick, man. And at least, you know, I, I think the Chargers have something in Herbert if they can train him properly. I just mm-hmm. don't think Tyrod Taylor is the one to have him. I don't think he's the one to really break Herbert in the right way. Okay, okay. Well, that's a fair take from Mike. Uh, so let's go to uh, Kenneth Murray Jr. Um, I believe they traded up to get him, and they yes. really – they really gave up a lot of assets to get him. So me being a uh, me being an Oklahoma fan, I, I was I was really high on Kenneth Murray. Um, I mean he's I mean he's the prototypical inside linebacker. I mean this dude. I mean he's gonna he's gonna bring the thunder coming downhill. Now he is limited, and I mean he has been limited in college against the pass. I mean we've all seen it. We've all seen him get exposed. Uh, you know, in, in, in past situations. So I think that's something that he definitely needs to work on. Good thing about him is he has people like Derwin James and everybody knows Chris Harris Jr. to kind of help compensate for that. But you're talking about getting a field general here at the inside linebacker position. I couldn't agree more, dude. I, uh, well, I thought that that was a good trade back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I, I, I think – I, what I what I'm hoping for Kenneth Murray, obviously not in our conference, but at the same time, you 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 still want to see sh- at a certain point in time, you want to see like mediocre teams kind of finally break the mold. Mm-hmm. And I, I feel like the Chargers have just always underachieved in that threshold. But the thing that Kenneth Murray brings to that is intensity, dude. Like I agree with you at Oklahoma. Like you you saw Jalen Hurts turn the offense back around once he finally stepped up. But the defense never faltered at all because of Kenneth Murray. Yeah. And so I, when they traded back up for that, I was like, okay, well, that is that is a team-changing move right there, way more than going and picking up Herbert. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, Herbert is a future franchise quarterback. I, I That's to be seen. I'm not saying whether he is or not. But Kenneth Murray is definitely going to be a game-changer for that team. In my yeah. Mind, well, and I just want to add another point. You know, when, when you think about him playing against us twice a year, I mean, he's definitely going to be somebody that he's 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 going to be a force to be reckoned with on their defense, and especially us playing against them. I mean, you know, he's he's definitely going to be somebody that that you're going to have to account for. Yeah, unfortunately for him, we just drafted the, you know, one of the fastest tight end, well, the fastest tight end in this draft, but also uh-huh. that now they. And the they one we had from last hope, year as well. They have to hope Murray and Derwin James can cover two insanely fast tight ends for an entire game. So, and 60 minutes in football is a lifetime. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, their, their fourth-round pick, running back Joshua Kelly out of UCLA. Uh, they picked Joshua Kelly up to replace Melvin Gordon that the Broncos signed. Um, I thought he was a decent running back. Um Maybe too. Agreed. Not, you know, not somebody that I'm just like, ooh, you know, they got Joshua Kelly. I mean, not 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 that level, but I mean, I think he's okay, decent running back. I mean, so obviously uh Austin Eckler, I mean, he's gonna be their pretty much I mean, their go to running back. I mean, the guy can do it all. I mean, he can run block catch. So, I mean, it seems like you want to have that guy on the field more times than than probably Joshua Kelly. I mean, he's probably coming in doing cleanup. Uh, maybe inside the red zone, uh, you know, kind, kind of runner, you know, in between the tackles. But, I mean, it's a okay pick. Yeah, for round four, uh, I mean, after seeing him at the Senior Bowl, like, hey, I, I mean, I was impressed. I really was. Um, I, I think he was a good pick. He gets a lot of flack, dude. But for a round four pick, that, that's not bad. No, you know? no, that's not bad value at all. I mean, running backs like him – I mean, I mean, let, let's just be honest. I mean, this day and age, the running back position being valued the way that it is, I mean, third, fourth round, where, where you're getting them, unless they're just super special, like a Saquon Barkley, I mean, that's that's good value. Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. I mean, he shows up in the big moments, and what, what more can you really ask for? I mean, you know, if, if one guy stands out on a crap team, there's a reason for that. And mm-hmm, it, absolutely. And, you know, I mean – <laughs> that is what it is at that point. There's, there's no other real way to argue that. Okay. Uh, wide receiver Joe Reed, Virginia. Honestly, I ain't got nothing on this dude. I, I got nothing. <laughs> so we're going to move right along. All righty. 
Hello, hi, Gilman. We uh, we kind of have a background on this guy, but I mean, I I was shocked the way they were talking. He was going to go a little bit like earlier in the draft, like uh, roughly around fourth round. So mm -hmm. I, I, that was a good pick. Well, they did last year. Um, another safety last year that I mean, th this guy's clearly a death piece. I mean, because you have Derwin James. And I cannot think of the guy that he took. Stay healthy, dude. It, or, or he's doing the typical Chargers thing, and he just doesn't want to play there. I mean, possibly, but who is that kid that they took last year? Is safety? I mean, he was like a no-name school guy that they kind of took. Uh, at the, it's the first or the second round, I believe. I'm not gonna yeah. pretend no. No okay. Idea. Okay. D don't know. Him. But yeah, I mean, th this guy, I mean, he seems to be a death piece. And there's seven round pick, KJ Hill. I mean, th this guy that here. Blows my mind, dude. That that right there, mm -hmm. like, <laughs> that might end up being the backfire of the draft, dude. I, I'm, I'm, call I'm just saying that strictly because of the fact that how much of a chip on your shoulder do you have to be as KJ Hill for mm -hmm. going seventh round? Seventh yeah, we definitely round. think that he should have won a little bit. Earlier than the seventh oh, round, he's the second round pick. Yeah, I mean, so he's not the most athletic wide receiver, but I mean, he has exceptional, he has exceptional right running abilities, and his hands are ridiculous. So you know, from from a guy in high school who was a converted running back, and now he's a wide receiver. I mean, this guy is going to give you. I, I mean, I, I think I think he's going to give you very good. Uh, he's you know, the only playmaking one abilities. Roster, I think that we need to be concerned about. Like it's truthfully, well, well, I I think out of this draft class, that's, I mean, him, him and uh, Kenneth Murray, I, th those are the two that I'm like, okay, they, you know, with with this pick, okay, good picks. Everybody else is like, eh. I mean, in in in, let's say, you know, the they don't be typical Chargers, and half the roster is hurt half the year anyway, so. Interested in Chargers tickets? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> anybody interested in Chargers tickets? Right, does, does anybody want? Are they playing the soccer stadium still? Once? Are they playing at the soccer stadium, or, or were they playing at the SoFi? I think they're done with. Yeah, I think they're going to the SoFi. Okay, I can't good luck. Have that conversation. Are they done at the soccer stadium? Like, <laughs> good I, luck splitting uh, stadiums with, with a team that's better than you and got more fans. Dude, the fact that they uprooted themselves from the only fan base they had and moved them to a spot where they loathe this team. Like, mm -hmm. there's, there is Raiders fans still there, and they were like, what the f You're moving the San Diego team the fuck? <laughs> what are you doing? But you're moving, you're moving the Raiders team from that shithole up there, not to this shithole, but over to that place? Like, what, what are we doing geographically here, man? This is a mm. fucking shit show all around. Last person out of California to turn off the lights, right? Yeah, which uh, at this point in time is literally anything in the West Coast. Well, I get, I guess we can't shit on them too much. Technically, the Bay just went to the Super Bowl, so. Yeah, sure. I mean, not not the. <laughs> Not the east side of the bay, but the west side of the bay has been there a few times. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> All right, sir. So do we uh, go ahead and drop the dun 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 dun? Uh, yeah. So let's go to the Super Bowl champs, the Chiefs. God, I hate saying that because now we, we literally had to hear all all season how they're the defending Super Bowl champs. So I'll extend an olive branch for what it's worth. Mm -hmm. This is their first Super Bowl, whatever. Uh, been first Super Bowl in 50 years. Yeah, so they, they, but they didn't win that one. So this is numero uno for them, right? Oh, so this is numero uno. Yeah, this is because they lost that one back in what, fucking 69, whatever it was? Yeah, a long fucking time ago. Yeah, so yeah, forever and a day. Um, you got Pat Mahomes. I do love. I love Pat Mahomes, dude. I think the guy, he has a great personality. I see exactly why people rally around him. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. Even just as, uh, you know, all the years, <clears throat> I've never hated the Chiefs. I've always loved that rivalry. I mm -hmm. fucking hate the Raiders. I'm not going to pretend to even have any positive emotions towards them. Fuck them. Um, and when they started this draft off, this proves exactly why they're – potentially probably going to go to the Super Bowl again this year. 
Okay, so the uh, so the, the the first round pick is Clyde Edwards Hilaire, which uh, I think me and you both agreed that God, this is a great pickup for them. Watch our video. Of, our reaction says it all. Yeah, so them adding him to this offense is again they've gotten better on offense just by adding this guy here. I mean, he's a short, shifty runner that can pretty much. I mean, he can pretty much do it all. I mean, he can run, block, catch. I mean, he has he has moves. So he is definitely somebody that if if you're not if if you're not careful, he will shake your ass. So I I'll I'll arrogantly say this. All right. Mm-hmm. If they did not have Clyde Edwards Hilaire on that offense, LSU would have not won that championship. I'll um, that's, say that. That's fair because, I mean, what he did, I mean, th- let's be honest, they just didn't sit there and throw the ball. I mean, a lot of the highlights that you see from the championship is Joe Burrow and throwing the ball to, you know, Chase and Jefferson. Go go back and watch the game. Claudio was hilarious. Was a huge part of it. He just op- he opens everything because he, he he's a do it all running back. I mean, it, obviously, like I said, our reaction said everything. If you guys go back and watch the second half of that first round draft, I mean, I I know it's just massively long, but we when he came up on the board, both of us our faces dropped because. Mm-hmm. He, would you agree? Is he the number one running back in this draft? Uh, well, he was definitely number two for me. I mean, Swift was probably probably my number one, but I mean, Cla- Claudio was hilarious. I mean, he's he's up there, and it's I was insane. damned that I was like, damn, they got him. Like, dude, I, well, fuck. Good luck seeing him twice a year now. No, dude. Like, he was he was hands down for me. Uh, I mean, you know. Obviously, like I said, I, I I am a bum when it comes to anything professional athlete. But like, I I've never seen a do it all back that does what he does. I mean, the, he he runs between the a gaps. He has no problems doing that, and he still catches passes like effortlessly out of the backfield. Like he 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 runs fucking he runs out routes no problem. Like I mm-hmm. I, I mean. I, I, I don't really know who to compare him to. I, I, I just. Well, I mean, he's maybe Jones drew maybe, but I, I don't, I don't even think Maurice Jones drew had the capabilities that Clyde Edwards Hilaire does. You know, that, that, that type of stature he has, I mean, he's low to the ground, thick ass legs. I mean, when he gets those legs turning over on contact, it's going to be hard to bring that little bowling ball down. But he but, catches. Yeah. And he catches that's, that's... too. Yeah, he, he catches. I mean, the the guy is mortifying, like from a defensive scheme. Because mm-hmm. yeah, you got to worry about Patrick Mahomes, and now you got to worry about this dude. Because he, who was the other running back for LSU? I don't know. Oh, thank you. Okay. <laughs> okay I, I'm just kind of curious because I don't know who the other. I mean, I can at least name off two wide receivers. I can name the quarterback off. I can name off at least two guys off the offensive line. I can't name the other fucking running back for LSU. Mm-hmm. So, like, and they didn't just win the championship this year. They set record-setting numbers thanks to mm-hmm. this fucking guy right here because of how insanely talented he is. I know right. that sounds like I'm sucking Let's drop his like nuts this. right now, and let's go into the rest of them. <laughs> Dude, that, Remember, that would beat you so bad, bro. It, when they pulled him at number 32, I was like, all right, we, we were on to something with that one. All right, Willie Gay Jr., the coach puncher, or the quarterback puncher. He he punched somebody. <laughs> I can't remember. Everybody kept talking about that in the pre-draft process. But, yeah, so one of uh, Kansas City's biggest holes last year was their uh, linebacking core. And, honestly, they, they've they got better uh, getting Willie Gay Jr. I mean, again, I mean, this guy is a run stuffer. What do you think about him, Mike? I mean, yeah. It... Yeah, he's exactly that. <laughs> like, I mean, he's... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't really know. Dude, this one's all on you. you like, I, I, I thought Willie Gates was good, but as soon as he knocked somebody out, I would have immediately taken him at, like, round four. So, because yeah. that, 
that's one of those things you're bringing to the locker room where you're like, eh, well, I mean, we, we could probably come up with something else. Yeah, our, our, our inside linebacker core mm. is, is lacking at best, but like... Yeah, but when you have somebody like Willie Gay Jr. and you're bringing him into a championship locker room and you're bringing him in with somebody like Tyrone Mathis or uh, Chris Jones, you know, I I think they'll get him straightened out. You know, I, I, I don't I don't think they'll have any kind of off field issues with that guy. And, you know, especially with him being in the locker room and him being around, again, championship caliber people is one of those. Hey, keep your head down and do your work, bro. You know, so. Uh, D- d- despite him having uh, personality issues and off the field issues, I-, I think with him coming in the the right situation, I think he do just fine. Well, here's hoping he has a horrible career. Absolutely, we'll we'll want the Chiefs to win another one. Lucas Niang, um, yeah, another uh, another not, offensive tackle that we picture, bro. <laughs> that is he has a lot of neck hair, dude. That's all I see is neck hair. The fuck, like. Who thought that that was going to be his picture for the team, man? <laughs> that poor SOB, dude. Like, oh, like, oh yeah, go, go ahead. What you bring to the table? Ooh. Ooh, I, I, I Different think, profile pick, bro. I think I think we can church this one up. Eh, no, nope. <laughs> I don't have talent with this one. Yeah, yeah but Lucas Niang, um, he 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 was definitely somebody that um that we just kept hearing over and over and over as somebody to watch at the offensive uh tackle position yeah, and uh, especially I know yeah one. yeah and uh, especially as Denver Broncos fans if you were looking for uh death at the offensive tackle spot I mean you you heard L- Lucas Niang's name heard I mean called a bunch of times so other than that um you know, he's he's going to be one of those guys that end up fighting for a, a starting spot. You know, if if he doesn't get it right off the bat, I mean, soon down the road, I mean, he'll be he'll be in a, in a starting role. So, he's a right, uh, tackle, right? Yeah, I I, I want to say yes, but I'm not 100 percent sure. Yeah, I think he was a right tackle. So if that's the case, then I'm going to assume that Fisher's position is still solidified. So they're they're probably gonna have him come in. I don't even remember who the right tackle was for the Chiefs, but mm-hmm. if that's the case, obviously he's gonna come in and push him with hopefully with more hair. But no, when the right tackle, um, he's like the only guy that consistently kind of keep uh, Von Miller in check. I don't I mean who. consistently. I mean, fuck, who knows? Oh well. well he had he had one game. Well, at least for this season, he had one game where it's like, all right, well, you got Joe Flacco at the helm, so all you got to do is just manage. And Bradley Chubb was already injured; he was out for the season, so you, mm-hmm. you really didn't. Yeah, I kind, I kind of take our first about seven to eight games of the season and throw them in the toilet because we were figuring out what the fuck's going on with the defense. Mm-hmm. We didn't get blown out. But the games that we lost were, yeah, we should have won them kind of deal. So, I mean, when, when you get right down to it, Von Miller caught a lot of flack for, for doing what he needed to do. But uh-huh. I, I still think the guy had a fantastic season, man. So, especially with no stable, the guy had no stable right outside linebacker for six, seven games. So they mm-hmm. won, like, started unleashing Malik Reed. And, and just were, getting double team and double team and double team, just I mean, man, that that, that shit ain't no fun because you know, like a lot of people that are probably analyzing the games and stuff like that. Have you ever been double team? Have you ever been blasted and blown up by two grown different men. people? These are yeah, grown men. It, this shit doesn't not, feel good. Yeah, they, they these are dudes in their like mid twenties, and we know what a man in his mid twenties is compared to a dude that's eighteen. You know. So, like, <laughs> it was a fucking Deion Sanders always bringing that up. Yo, he's a great, great, or, shit, I've been drinking. He's a grown man. It's like, yeah, mm-hmm. motherfucker, making a good point there. Well, like, I remember in college playing on, uh, I think it was maybe punt, like, punt, punt team. I think th- I mean, this is early on. And I remember I got blasted by two people. This shit does not feel fun at all. So just imagine Von Miller every play 
it's just just getting just blasted by two people. I mean, he's getting he's getting handled by the the tackle. Then he's getting handled by a tight end. Then oh, you got a running back coming off and firing on him. That shit doesn't feel well. No, and I respect the fuck out of Denver for what they did this offseason and bringing in everybody who's going to take that disadvantage and completely throw it underneath the rug because yep. they, they they brought in they brought in a fucking right defensive tackle who also can double as a right D end. They had Draymond Jones who broke out. Anyway, it, okay, so let's go back. Sorry, let let's let's circle back to what's going on with the Chiefs. So Niang. <laughs> He ain't got to be an interesting <laughs> setup. So, Legereus Sneed from the Louisiana Tech setup. Here we go. Another one. Yeah. Okay. So, this is when I text Mike. Um, the, the the Chiefs picked, picked right before the, the Raiders did, and they picked Sneed. Then right after that, that's when the, the Raiders picked a Mick Robertson. And I was just like, well, carbon copy. I was like, they take what the Chiefs do. I'm like, oh, well, we're going to mimic that. Great job, Raiders. Unbelievable, dude. Well, believable. Sad. Disappointing. So, All right. I'm I'm not going to pretend to know anything about Legereus Need. One thing I'm not um, going to do is, uh, is question the recruitment squad for the Kansas City Chiefs because they're very good at picking out people that are underappreciated and turning them into champions. So Absolutely. Yeah, it, Andy Reid, he he's an unheralded hero for that. So we'll we'll, we'll see how Legereus Need pans out. I think they'll be all right. That also, but that was a good pickup for them too because I mean, especially with uh, what's his dick, ended up he he's gonna get cut. There's no way they're gonna keep him on the team this year. Who is uh, that? The fuck's his name? Uh, the old, the ex Redskin. Hell's his name? Quarterback. Just ended up getting uh, ended up getting arrested for the DUI plus plus plus. Was it Breland? Yes, Bashad Breland. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so I'm yeah. curious if they're going to transition Sneed to uh, from safety to basically kind of like a halfway zone coverage corner, which is what Breland was. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, either way it goes, whatever he got himself into, I mean, I'm pretty sure the league is going to delivers some some kind of punishment on him and i mean he's going to be out for a few games regardless do what he was already on a four game suspension oh well well you may not see him most of the season or if they don't turn around and cut him there's no way kansas city is going to keep him he's no benefit he's just basically especially with as short as they are on roster supply no there's there's no way they have they have no cap space to keep that guy around uh, so then we can go to the last pick, uh, DN from Michigan, Michael. Um, I mean, honestly, bro, I, I really don't know much about the guy. Um, if DN is not, I mean, we we really didn't didn't, didn't didn't scout him nor hurt really much about him. I mean, that's probably why he got t- taken so late. My guess is, but I mean, I think that was the last pick, right? Okay. Keys out of Tulane. Again, oh, don't know much about the guy. First name. Humor me. Fuck. What? Bo Pete? <laughs> dude, there's, dude, there's no fucking way his family named him Bo Pete. There's, there's <laughs> no way. They would have called it like Bo Pete or some <laughs> shit. There's no way they called it. If him. he's from Louisiana, I mean, of course, he got some kind of French fucking accent on it. I but... hope. Christ for his sake, I hope so. Oh, I'm sorry. He was he was uh all state player in Mississippi. Oh, <laughs> hey, Bo P just <laughs> sounded about right, right for somebody from Mississippi. <laughs> Bo Pete Bo, Bo Keys, dude. <laughs> Bo Pete like, Keys. Dude, tell uh, me that guy has to play with a chip on his shoulder his entire Absolutely. <laughs> Boy named Bo Pete. Dude, it's a- <laughs> you, you're right. It's fucking Bo P. The P is capitalized. That is a two oh word. Oh my god. He <laughs> got Bo P. Yeah, I'm sorry. That doesn't strike fear in my heart. Bo P. Keys. Dude, yeah, I, so. What was I saying? I mean, God bless the dude, dude. I, 
hopefully he fucking does well because that is that is a hell of a name to overcome. Well, man, you can't be that that much failure in life with with the name Bo Pete. Bo Pete. Like, <laughs> all right, so looking at the Chiefs roster, is it an oh shit or is it ah eh, n- not that worried about it? Um, the their draft class. From their roster, I'm gonna say oh shit. Okay, from the roster, oh shit. Okay, yeah, so I'm with, sorry, with this draft the class, roster draft class, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna say oh shit because uh, that guy right there. Okay. Well, I mean, I think with 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 the Denver Broncos not beating the Chiefs since uh, 2015, I mean, regardless of whatever i mean it's, it's it's still oh shit because let's face it i mean we've been getting our butt spanked by them since 2015 so i mean in in anything in anybody that they add to it i mean it's just it's just a plus but also i think we've gotten better as well so hopefully that that turns into us us giving it back to the the Kansas City chiefs yeah, I, I think that's the hope now that we have one of those things that's called a franchise quarterback, which is the mm-hmm. first time in, in little Denver Broncos history. We, we've never drafted a, a franchise quarterback since 1969. We have, or 63? 63, 63. We have not drafted a franchise quarterback, bro. Like, I mean, you, you think about it. No, none of the, the major quarterbacks we've, ever, we've had, John Elway, um, Mortensen, like none of those guys, they were never a fucking um, Jake the Snake Plumber. Yeah, well, and, they weren't drafted by the organization. It was more acquisitions. Dude, the old, uh, Brian Greasy was a dive bomb. And uh, by the way, who got <laughs> who was the one that replaced Brian Greasy at Michigan? Ended up getting drafted from that place after him. No Tom Brady. Yeah. yeah. Oh, TB. Oh, oh, Tampa Tommy. So, you you think about how hit and miss that that crucial, like, not even crucial, quintessential position is in the NFL. Like, if you don't hit that, it's over. Mm-hmm. The Chiefs have that. Mahomes is absolutely that. So, yeah, I mean, we have that now. I I, I honestly think it's firepower against firepower. But mm-hmm. that guy right there. Just with what the Holmes brings to the table, as well as what that guy right there brings, yeah, they scare me. That's fair. That's fair. All right. So that right there is a recap of the AFC West uh, draft class. Um, if you go back and look at our, our our most recent podcast, we sit down and we broke down the Broncos uh, draft class and how we felt about that. Um, hey. What's up? Still got to go over whether or not we're concerned about the Chargers and the Raiders. Oh, uh, am I concerned about the Chargers or the Raiders? Fuck no. All right. I'm just gonna be honest. I mean, it's it's for one, it's the Raiders, um, and you don't know what the quarterback situation is gonna be like for really either teams. I mean, they're playing around. With, I mean, the LA Chargers they're playing around with this whole idea. Of we're we're gonna go with Tyrod Taylor. I'm sorry, Tyrod Taylor doesn't strike fair in my heart at all. And my personal feeling is they're going to trot Tyrod Taylor out as a starting QB for a few games. And somewhere during the season, you're going to see Justin Herbert take over as a starting QB. I mean, because that's the whole reason why you drafted the guy is for him to be your franchise quarterback. So, I mean, you're not going to go with this uh, Tyrod Taylor uh, experiment for long. And again, with the Raiders, if you don't have a starting quarterback and you're going to go to this whole open competition, then I, I, I don't see it happening either. So I think as as Denver Broncos, we need to focus on actually sticking it to the Chiefs because all roads lead through Kansas City Chiefs. Agreed. Agreed. <laughs> well, there it is. Might take us out of here. All right, guys. Well, um, so let's go ahead and recap. So we know that the Chiefs are still a major concern, obviously just because of what Andy Reid brings to the table, especially Pat Mahomes. Um, that team's dangerous. 
And, it, you know, as legit Broncos fans, we're pretty subjective. And we, we've seen the Chargers. That team, they, they're just not consistent enough for us to be concerned about. The Raiders are the Raiders, so who gives a shit? Um, but, yeah, that, that so that kind of brings to a head the draft. We're not really going to cover any more of this. Uh, it's, it's beating a dead horse. Anybody that's out on YouTube is just trying – to sit there and scrounge for podcasts, especially coming together and talking about it. This is our last draft podcast. We covered what we give a shit about. Hopefully you guys enjoy it as well. Um, the other thing we want to talk about is now from this point forward, you guys are going to actually start seeing the modicum of stuff that we bring to the table, and that is the rest of the Uncommon Mon, or Uncommon Mon, uh, Uncommon Man podcast involving us drinking, which obviously you can see I do in spades, um, as well as us talking about some of the things that we had brought up before we even got into this conversation. That's me and him catching up on what we do on cars, as well as just our regular life. Um, stock market. So there's a few things. Uh, the the ep next upcoming podcast is going to be primarily involving just how we're doing with finances, especially dealing with this whole fucking pandemic we have going on. And, uh, you know, what, what we're going to try and do to set ourselves up financially to come out of it ahead of everything else. And uh, I think you guys really enjoyed that. I, we, we've had a good setup going so far, and it's just a matter of just a patience game at this point. But there's a lot of cool other things we're going to bring in the topic as well. So, David, is there anything that you would like to address to that as well? Um, you know, just... Just kind of stay tuned for some other things that we're going to introduce to the podcast. I mean, Mike kind of gave you a brief overview. We're not going to go too much into them right now, but um, just stay stay tuned to the next episode. And we're going to start introducing just a little bit more of uh, what we consider to be an uncommon man in today's society and why we decided to call our podcast Uncommon Man and just different things that we're going to start diving into. And, you know, we, we really want to engage and talk to um, a lot of other people out there that may consider themselves to be a uncommon man in today's society as well. So uh, just kind of stay tuned and uh, keep a lookout for those videos. Absolutely, buddy. I couldn't have said it better myself. All right, folks. Well, enjoy. Hey, as we've been sitting here hyping up on our new Twitter account, that uh, both of us will be shit posting out of. Make sure you follow mm -hmm. that. Um, this will be coming live here pretty soon. We will notify you guys if you are following. If not, please do. Uh, other thing, hit like and subscribe. I know it's super hacky, but it helps us out. Kind of gives us an idea of where you guys are engaged at. Make sure that you do comment how much you guys either like it or dislike it. That's fine. These are all things we can do to fine tune. Uh, we're, we're not going to accommodate all of you guys, so some of you guys can fuck off. But we are definitely going to do what we can to make sure that we, uh, we appeal to as many people as possible in certain mm -hmm. aspects regarding other things that we talk about. But for the most part, yeah, I mean, let, fuck it. We don't give a shit. We're having a good time. And uh, we hope you guys do, too. So, all right, buddy. Any last uh, comments, input? That's it, man. See you later. Wonderful, dude. All right, man. I'll see you in a few days. All right. Peace out. Later, buddy.